today we are going to be installing the AR Sandbox software completely from scratch on a blank PC, um, including op installing an operating system. Uh, what I did in preparation for this, I downloaded the current version of Linux Mint, uh, put it on this USB stick and we are going to boot from that uh, and then go through the entire process um, just to show exactly how that works. I'm using uh, Linux Mint right now because I tried it just before with uh, Ubuntu and it turns out Ubuntu is kind of lame. They took away some options that are really convenient for the sandbox, so we're going to go with something a little bit more configurable. Um, and also it turns out that Linux Mint is the most popular Linux distribution anyway, so why not go with that one. So I'm going to plug the USB stick in and then turn on the computer. The computer I'm using for this I took out of cryo storage. Uh, it's a slightly older system, it's I think about five and a half years old, uh, has a relatively recent graphics card in it so it should be doing just fine, but it's not a super fancy PC by any means, uh, meaning it should be pretty comparable to what uh, new users would be going through. I'm going to the setup first just to make sure that we can boot from the USB stick. Uh, how this of course is going to look like depends very much on your bias and how new or old your computer is, so this will look slightly different, but we typically don't have to do very much in here. I just want to check real quick CPU configuration. So we have an Intel Core i7 at 2.67 GHz. We have, doesn't say here how much RAM we have, but I think we have 6 GB. Um, as I said, this computer is somewhat old. Uh, it does have a, a more modern graphics card in it, as we'll see later. Boot, here we go. Uh, boot device priorities. So we have our internal hard drive, we have a CD-ROM, and this here is the USB stick I just plugged in, so it's already selected as a boot device we should have no problems whatsoever. I'm just going to exit and discard any changes we might have made and then re reboot one more time and when it's rebooting uh, again depending on your bias you might have to press a special key uh, to bring up a boot menu which allows you to select from which device you want to boot. In my case that is F8 and I'm mashing that button here and yes okay we have been selected and here I go and I select my USB drive and hit enter and then we just have to wait and here is already Linux Mint um, it will boot in uh, 5 seconds apparently so we'll just wait I have never done a Linux Mint install before so I'm just as much of a newbie uh, as anybody else at this point who is watching this video I assume uh, so if I'm stumbling just uh, bear with me I'm trying to uh, aim this video towards first-time Linux users or first-time Linux installers to be most useful. Let's hope that everything goes smoothly. All right, we have a mouse cursor. Well, that's a good start. And apparently we are in a live desktop environment already. Uh, that's an interesting way of doing it. But since I want to install Linux Mint for good, I'm click going to click on the Install Linux Mint icon here, actually double click on that, and that shall take us to the installer, hopefully. And there we go. Uh, I want to install in English, yes please. And my system is not connected to the internet. Aha, yes, I'm in my lab here uh, and normally now your computers would be plugged into some network which allows you to automatically configure a uh, network to just plug in and plug and play basically DHCP. Uh, that's not how it's set up here, so I need to manually put in my information. And because I don't want you guys to see that, I'm going to pause for a second and be right back. Okay, and we're back. Um, the installer has already figured out that we are now connected to the internet, so we can just continue. Now, in the next step we have to decide where we would like to install the new operating system and there are two main options here. One of them is to install Linux Mint alongside whatever you currently have, um, which in most people's cases would probably be Windows, so you can install here a dual boot which allows you to boot either into Linux to run the sandbox or into Windows, um, or you can just wipe your hard drive uh, and install Linux Mint as the only operating system. As you can see here, uh, it's asking me to install Linux Mint alongside Ubuntu 14.04.2, which is what I just installed an hour ago. Uh, but it turns out that Ubuntu is a little bit effed up, so I'm going to uh, wipe it again. Um, as most people will probably want to go with a dual boot, and as there's not really going to be a difference in there, I'm just going to select uh, a dual boot installation and see what the differences are. Uh, 
Okay. I have no idea how this is going to work out. All right, so now our IC, I have to allocate space between the two operating systems. Convenient. Uh, so this is the old one that in your case would most probably be Windows or might be macOS, who knows. And it's asking me to adjust the size. Now, how much size do we actually need? Uh, as I just did an Ubuntu install, and Linux Mint is basically Ubuntu with the labels peeled off, um, we will need about the same amount of space. And it turns out that after installation I checked my Ubuntu hard drive was using about 10 gigabytes, uh, which is really, that's pretty much all you need. So I'm going to just be on the safe side, I'm going to allocate 20 gigs to Linux Mint, and that should be all we need. So then I just go to install now. Um, okay, so now here is where it asked me to confirm that yes, I want to do that because now it is going to make irrevocable changes to the hard drive. It is not going to wipe my previous installation, so it's not going to wipe your Windows. Um, but I will still have to confirm here. And as it tells me, this might take a long time because it might have to copy data back and forth. Uh, this might take a long time for you. It's hopefully not going to take a long time here because my Ubuntu installation is pretty much virgin and is very small. So I'm just going to click on continue. Now on the other hand, my hard drive here is an even older one than the computer. I pulled it out of some really, really old computer. Uh, so this might still take a while. I think what I'm going to do at this point is pause and then come right back uh, when something happens. Okay, well that took about 10 seconds, yeah, ha. Uh, I'm going to, uh, now it's asking me if I want to uh, write more changes to disk. Here is where it will format uh, the new uh, 20 gigabyte space that I set aside. So now we are continuing with the installation just as if I had selected previously to completely wipe my hard drive. So the, the changes versus dual boot are, I would think, I would think done at this point. Okay. Now we are in the installation proper. It is preparing the new 20 gigabyte space. In the background now, it's already downloading packages and, uh, and starting to install. So I need to set my time zone. Yes, I am close enough to Los Angeles that it counts. And I think the next step is to choose a keyboard layout. Okay, didn't expect that. Uh, yes, English, US. Aha, and now we need to set up a user account. Uh, even for a single user system, you still need a user account. You're not going to see very much of it, but to keep things simple, I'm just going to name this account AR Sandbox. This is the full name. This is where normally your last name, sorry, first name, last name would go. Then it wants us to select a computer system name. I'm just going to call it AR Sandbox. This is probably case insensitive, but who cares? And then as username, how inventive AR Sandbox. And now we should, even if this is a single use system, we should. Uh, select a password just to be on the safe side. I'm going to select a very simple one as this computer is not on the going to be on the internet anyway. Um, well it seems it's fair and then yes uh, here I'm selecting login automatically that means that you don't really ever see a login screen. If you turn on the computer it goes right into this uh, uh, user's desktop system which is for the sandbox preferable because then you can auto start the sandbox and essentially have this thing run in kiosk mode where you have it in some cabinet and you turn it on in the morning it will start up automatically, run all day, you turn it off at night, you're done. So we continue. Alright, at this point it's already uh, downloading installing files and this is going to take about 10 minutes. So now again I'm going to stop the, stop the video and come back the next time I have to do anything. Okay, it's 10 minutes later, well, give or take, uh, and the installation first part of the installation is done. Um, at this point we have to reboot. Uh, this is going to be the first of two reboots we have to do. So let's see how this goes. Oh, right. I need to now pull out the USB stick or if you have, if you use a DVD as installation medium, just, you know, eject that right now and then press enter, otherwise it will boot into installation again and of course you can get out of that but it's kind of inconvenient. Um, since while you're waiting here I strongly recommend using a USB stick for installation. It is much more convenient and also quite a bit faster and you are not going to waste the DVD. The uh, installation image that I downloaded for Linux Mint is a one point... Oh, hang on a sec. This is important. Uh, 
okay, now I can talk. Uh, the installation image is about 1.6 gigabyte. So uh, a two gigabyte USB drive, this one here is four gigabyte. Uh, should do the job just fine. All right, now this is what it's going to look like in a dual boot system. Uh, after you boot, you go to the Grub boot menu and here we have the Linux Mint operating system we just installed. Uh, and then down here, we have the original operating system that was on there before. In our case, as I said, that's Ubuntu 14.04.2. Uh, in your case, this might be Windows or it might be Mac OS, uh, whatever. Uh, if you now go here and enter, press enter here, uh, your computer should boot into Windows as if nothing happened. Uh, everything should be perfectly fine. But of course, we want to boot into the first option, which is Linux Mint 17.1. Uh, you can also configure it, by the way, to by default boot into Windows unless you explicitly select Linux, but, you know, that's up to you, of course. I'm just going to press Enter, and then it should take a little moment, and we should be on the desktop for this new user we created in no time at all. Like I said, I've never done the Linux Mint install before, um, but at this point the operating system is already completely there. The rest of this uh, should be like pretty basically uh, every other Linux distribution. Now, one word about desktop environments. One of the things about Linux is uh, it is extremely flexible. So there's not just one desktop environment, the way how Windows are arranged, the way how you interact with your system, but there's a bunch of them. Uh, and the one I downloaded here is called Mate. Uh, it's not the default one, but it's the one I personally prefer. And I'm going to use that for this video uh, and I, I recommend, if you don't have any personal preference, to just go with uh, Linux Mint Mate. It's one of the options on the Linux Mint download site. Uh, and then you can just follow along with the instructions we're doing here. Okay, here we are. Um, so now, to continue with the install... Uh, no, I don't want this. To continue with the installation, I'm just going to go to... Uh, there's a start menu here in the lower left corner. I'm just going to start Firefox and go to the LakeViz web page and uh, continue by just uh, following along with the installation instructions to not make a mistake, to not diverge. Oh, while we're here, um, this is the Linux Mint homepage, so I can show you what you should be downloading. Uh, there must be a link to... no... Ah, here we go. Um, download. So you go to Linux Mint, um, you click on download and then the latest release is 17.1 and then download links the one you want to get or the one I got is Mate 64-bit. Um, that will download f uh, a 1.6 gigabyte uh, disk image which you can then burn to DVD um, or to USB stick. Fairly straightforward. Okay, but that's not what I wanted to do. I want to go to Lakewiz. and then to the AR Sandbox forum and and here are the complete installation instructions so let's have a look step one install 64-bit Ubuntu not going to do that I'm going to change that recommendation to install Linux Mint step two install vendor supplied drivers for the NVIDIA graphics card uh, all right that turns out to be fairly straightforward we are going to go to the control center and then click on driver manager and here is where we have to enter our password. That's the one you assigned during installation. Installing a driver is understandably a system level change, which is why it asks you for your administrator password. And now this is going to take a little moment because it's going online and searching for applicable drivers for my system. As I might or might not have mentioned earlier, this computer has a fairly recent NVIDIA GeForce uh, GTX 680 in it. The driver manager is currently figuring that out uh, and then it's going to show us, here we go, show us the uh, list of available drivers. Right now we are using the X-Server X-Org Video Novo driver, which is the open source NVIDIA display card driver, which, let me just say, it's not going to work for our purpose. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, what we want instead is the recommended NVIDIA 331 driver. So I'm going to click on this and then just say apply changes. Um, as you can see, there are a couple of different options. There's NVIDIA 331, which is just the current version. There's 304. Uh, and there should even be a legacy driver, but it doesn't even list that one because my graphics card uh, is not supported by the legacy driver. So this is 
easy. Just go with whatever it recommends. At this point, um, the system is downloading the package and that is going to take a little while because uh, it turns out that Linux Mint doesn't necessarily have the best download servers. We can have a quick look-see here. Uh, let's go to all applications and what do we have? System tools. There should be a system monitor. And it is downloading data. Well, it's not downloading anything, so it seems to be done already. It downloaded 84.2 megabytes. Well, that would be the NVIDIA driver. Okay, never mind then. This was quicker than I had anticipated. So what it's doing right now is installing the driver. I'm guessing that my hard drive is currently cranking. The hard drive, as I said before, is really slow. Uh, it's going to take a moment here. Once the driver is done installing, the system should ask us to reboot. Uh, changing graphics drivers is a very low level uh, operation. It needs to, the system needs to be rebooted to make the change effective. So this is going to be the second and last reboot uh, during our installation here. Still applying changes. Okay, while we are waiting for this, why don't we already do the next step, which we can do. Uh, step number three, assign a keyboard shortcut to switch Windows into full screen mode. Open system settings, which we already had open now that I'm realizing it. Control center. Um, and then we go to the keyboard settings. We go to... Nope, sorry, not to keyboard. We go to keyboard shortcuts. This guy has a dedicated shortcut thing. Where is it? Keyboard shortcuts. It must be somewhere here. Huh. Don't see it right now. This one? Nope. Ah, hidden. Oh, okay. Haha. <laughs> yeah, you might have to scroll down. Okay, keyboard shortcuts. And then we look for the window tab, uh, actually window management, and we are looking for toggle full screen mode, which is right here. Do not select toggle maximization state, different thing. We want full screen mode. And then we press our keyboard shortcut and the installation instructions recommend to use Win and F. So I'm holding down Win, press F. And uh, Win here is called Mod 4, just ignore that. So this should already be active. So if I go into this window and press Win, of course it is not. Uh, it looks like the Win key does special things in Linux Mint. Never mind that. We are going to go with the alternative. Just click on that again. Control Alt F. And so now that should work. And indeed it does. Wonderful. Okay. So we are done with step three. Just let me make sure. Yep. Good. Uh, how are we doing here? Uh, apparently we are done at this point. Uh, the system is not asking me to reboot. But I am fairly certain that we have to. So let's go ahead and do that close all this, we can leave that open, uh, go to the system menu and say quit. Quit? That's odd. I wonder if quit is... yep, quit means restart, interestingly enough. Okay, restart. This is going to take a moment again um, and then we should have the NVIDIA driver going. If you have an ATI AMD card, such as a Radeon, um, then the method for you will be different. Um, graphics driver support for ATI cards on Linux is generally, at least the last time I checked, not as good as for NVIDIA cards, which is why we don't recommend them. But if you do have one, um, there is a proprietary driver supplied by AMD ATI, which is the FGL RX driver. Uh, you will want to install that one. You will not want to use the open source Radeon driver for the same reason you don't want the open source uh, Novo driver. It is just that the AR Sandbox uses some fairly advanced OpenGL techniques which are not well supported by the open source drivers. Which of course would be um, we would be in much better shape if the companies NVIDIA and AMD okay, that is weird, uh, would uh, work with the Linux developers to create a proper driver, but they don't. 
All right, this should get us right back to the desktop because I selected auto login. And there we are. Well, not quite yet. Still cranking. Okay. Now, uh, Firefox once more. This computer is sluggish, just ignore that. Um, favorites and web browser. And hopefully Firefox will remember where we last were. Yes, indeed it does. Great. Okay. Um, we did step three, now we do step four. Open a terminal window and then everything else will be in the terminal window. I am going to... Terminal, here we go. And since we're going to be using terminal quite a bit, I'm just going to drag that onto the desktop to create a shortcut. Double click that. Terminal. Wonderful. I'm going to put this here. And so now what I'm going to do is just uh, copy and paste from here to there. And on the Linux there's a trick. Uh, you don't have to actually copy and paste. You just select here and then move the mouse into the terminal window. Middle click will copy and then just hit enter. And we are going to do that all the way through. Okay, so now it's downloading the build script, which is of course the Ubuntu build script, but as I mentioned, Linux Mint is built onto an Ubuntu backbone, so everything should work swimmingly, I hope. Um, it is now asking me again for my password, because the script will install some required system level packages, which is yet another system level change, but fortunately it does not require um, a reboot. And it is downloading stuff, and so far it is looking good. Let me pull this a little bit here in the middle so it's easier to see on the camera. And I'm also going to zoom in a little bit. Should make it easier to read the text, because from now on most everything will be happening inside the terminal there. Okay. I should maybe briefly mention what the relationship is between Linux Mint and Ubuntu. As you can see, uh, this software update here goes to the Ubuntu software repositories. Um, so Linux Mint is essentially Ubuntu with some of the uh, changes that Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, made to Ubuntu, peeled off. Uh, some of the somewhat controversial changes, let's just say, removed. Uh, and then the whole thing is a little bit polished and simplified. Um, but under the hood, it is Ubuntu Linux. It uses the same package manager, it uses the same repositories, obviously, um, but some of the changes that are in Ubuntu uh, in the recent versions, spe specifically 14.04, uh, do not play nicely with the sandbox software, make things more complicated, uh, and uh, using uh, Linux Mint, specifically the Mate version of Linux Mint, which this year is, uh, is going to make everything work very nicely, I think. We'll see, I haven't tried it yet. This is taking longer than I'd expected. But at least it's not throwing up any error messages. Here we go. Um, the uh, required software has been installed. Um, the script has now progressed to the next stage where it is building the VUI VR toolkit. Uh, VUI is uh, fundamental software, it's sort of like an operating system almost for VR software uh, that we developed here. Um, it is normally meant to uh, create vi virtual reality applications that are run inside caves or on desktops or in head-mounted displays like the Oculus Rift. Um, and I abused it here to develop the AR sandbox software, which is not a traditional VR application, one would say, but it turns out that the VUI toolkit is powerful uh, and flexible enough to uh, allow me to do it and because it adds a lot of functionality that basically comes for free I decided to to use it. 
Uh, so it's building and installing that. Well, it's building it right now. It's going to install it in about 20 seconds, I would say. This is going pretty fast, considering that everything else is so sluggish. Yep. It is done. There we go. We have a spinning globe, which means that Rui is working. We can move this around. We have menus. I can make the globe transparent. I can put in the outer core. I don't want to, of course, do this right now. Uh, so this is just, that's it. It's working. Let me just check that the uh, full screen shortcut is working for Rui as well. Control, Alt and F and Booyah. Okay, good. When you do this, make sure that there's nothing left of the desktop. There's no single line at the bottom, that there are no panels, no menus, no title bars, nothing. That's what you want. Okay, um, we can just close the window to close that and then go to the next installation step. Uh, we are done with Wui. The next step is to install the Kinect package which will manage the Kinect camera. Uh, just as a reminder here, uh, the software currently only works with the first generation Kinect camera, the one for Xbox 360, uh, which you can still get for about 100 bucks at Amazon or your local electronics store. Uh, I just saw one the other day at Target. Um, it also works with the first generation Kinect for Windows, but they don't make that one anymore, so don't even bother. It was more expensive for the same functionality anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. Uh, this software does not yet work with Kinect version 2, which is a totally different piece of hardware. I'm now, I'm now creating the uh, Kinect package which is rather small, so it should be done any moment, and then we'll have to install that. That is typical behavior if you install Linux software from source. Uh, typically two steps. First you make it, which will uh, turn it from source into executables and libraries, and then you do make install to put those executables and libraries into some well-defined locations, which is what I'm doing right now. Now there's one additional wrinkle here, and that is the Kinect camera is not accessible by normal users for security reasons. Um, and the Kinect package comes with a device rule uh, which relaxes that restriction so any user who is logged into the system can also talk to the camera which is of course what you want uh, and I'm just going to um, execute this now. Now normally uh, this uh, would have asked me to enter my password again because it is another small system level change but the terminal remembers that I just entered my password five minutes ago so it's not asking me again we are done with that. The next step is now, and the last step, is to install the sandbox software itself. I'm just going to do copy-paste on these commands again. Whoops, select the two at a time. I wonder if that works, but I'm not going to try that now. And make. And the sandbox software is very small, so this is not going to take much time at all. And we are done. Uh, the sandbox software does not need to be installed to be used, which is why I'm not doing it here. It just you know, adds one more, one more step. I wanted to keep things simple. Uh, it can be run directly from the source directory where you built it, which is somewhat unusual, but you know, just removes one step. Uh, this was it. At this point, everything else is covered by um, by other uh, by other videos, um, and I am not at my sandbox right now, uh, meaning I can't really continue doing this. But I can do one more step. I want to at least make sure that the uh, Kinect software is working. And as it so happens, I have two Kinects on this computer. I'm going to plug one of them in now. Okay, just to make sure that the that everything is working, and then I'm going to run the raw. Uh, I'm going to run the calibration download utility, uh, which gets factory calibration parameters from the Kinect, and it already did its thing. And then I can do the next step as well, which is running the uh, raw Kinect viewer, which you would be using during uh, to align your Kinect camera or during calibration. I, again, I just want to make sure that it's working. So put this in there. And here it is. Uh, and this is the current view from one of my Kinects, but not quite. You see that there's a depth image here. Um, this is what the Kinect depth image looks like, but there's no color image. And that happens once in a while. Um, the Kinect is, you know, is a little bit flaky, 
Uh, in that case, you just restart that and it usually, there we go, sorts itself out. Uh, I'm going to full screen that. Um, you see that this here is the Kinect camera that is mounted to my 3D TV, which you can see here in the frame. There's another camera on the opposite end right there. That's my cubicle back there. Uh, the camera is sideways because it's mounted that way. It uh, doesn't really matter. You can, of course, you know, rotate this around. Whoops, maybe not like that. Uh, to put it upside, to put it right side up. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's clearly working. So at this point, the next calibration steps are sandbox specific and I can't really do it without a sandbox here but we do have very detailed videos showing everything that's going on um, I just I want to show one more thing uh, Vui comes with a little utility uh, that draws calibration patterns and I want to run that right now just to show you uh, you're going to be using that when aligning the projectors probably and that's what the calibration pattern looks like it already shows up in full screen mode um, once in a while, the, the pattern will look messed up when it starts up. There will be double circles or what have you. What you do then is you press con whatever your full screen key is, in my case Control alt f press that once to make the window not full screen, and then press it again, uh, and it will sort itself out. The important thing to look for here is that that pattern goes all the way up to the edges of your screen, that you're seeing the last horizontal and vertical lines going around the corners, that you see the full that you see all five circles completely on the screen with nothing missing or cut off um, and that in the middle here you see an alternating a pattern of alternating vertical black and white lines not something gray or smudgy but very clear vertical black and white lines this will make sure that your projector is properly synced to the video signal uh, and that you're not getting any weird scaling or stretching artifacts uh, it's kind of important to look out for that you want to get the best possible uh, display quality but this is now really it um, we are done at this point. So that was the uh, complete from scratch installation of Linux Mint 17.1 uh, Mate version on a fresh computer uh, all the way through including installing the sandbox software and as you saw I didn't do anything secret behind the scenes I just followed the instructions and went all the way through um, without any hitches so that's the way how it should be um, for you as well. Alright, well thank you very much for, for watching uh, and good luck with, uh, with your installations.